Hey everybody, I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Odd, and welcome to another Right Angle Lightning Round, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com, because apparently they think even less of you than I do. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is a lot of fun. Instead of going deep into one issue, I have secretly selected headline stories for Bill and Scott. It's, it's an ambush. It's a lot of fun. But if you want the very hottest takes, this is the way to do it. And uh, let's see, Bill, according to my notes, we're starting with you. Ah, California begs for more electricity amid heat wave and transition to green energy. That last phrase being the uh, key, I think. In their joint statement to California Independent Systems Operator, the two energy regulators urge the grid operator, it's so complicated, to use its tariff-based authority, dear God, you need more red tape, to procure additional resources, that is, electricity, for the months of July and August, along with the month of September, if conditions do not improve. Bill, my question is, uh, wouldn't conditions be a lot better if you stopped shutting down energy source production while uh, increasing wildfire risk by refusing to log and uh, take care of your messes out there? I've been in California since 1988, and I just don't understand what you're saying. You're trying to say that if you build more electrical power plants, we'll have fewer electrical shortages? Uh, so, I, I, so I've read in oh, books. Can't be right. No, that can't be right. Um, two things to know about the California uh, power system here is all you really need to know about California. One of them is we pride ourselves on green energy. We shut down nuclear plants that produce 1,600 uh, megawatts of power a year and replace them with a solar farm that produces 35. Yay. Uh, That's not good math. most of the energy that comes from this, uh, that comes to California is still produce the way that God intended you to create energy, which is by burning fossil fuels and natural gas is by far, by far the cleanest burning of these. I might mention parenthetically, by the way, that when I got here in 88 and the pollution was terrible and you couldn't see three blocks down the street, California was saying it, we're going to run all of our buses on compressed national ga uh, natural gas. And instead of these big clouds of black diesel smoke, it works great. Problem is compressed national gas is made available and cheaply by fracking. And that means that, you know, that's got to be out. So, so here's what you need to know about California. One of them is, is that a lot of the energy from California is produced by natural gas plants, but they're not in California. They're in um, Arizona or, or, or I think Arizona, most of them, or, or someplace that's not California. So we get the benefits of burning natural gas. And without them, we would be in the dark. But we get to tell ourselves that we're not uh, carbon uh, uh, polluters because even though the electricity that we burn – is natural gas electricity. It's not in California. And so therefore, it's not really in the atmosphere. You know what I mean? I mean the atmosphere is out there. The California <laughs> atmosphere is 100% pristine. Uh, and that's the main thing. And the second thing you need to know about California energy, and I did a, a fair amount of research on this, and I'll probably turn it into something someday. But I was looking at a list of new California power plants. And one of them, Steve, is, and I, I see it every way. It's uh, every day I go to the dentist anyway. It's it's on the five freeway. There's a, a there's a Decent sized little hill. And in the daytime, you can see all this water rushing down. And I thought, oh, it must be coming from the LA Reservoir. No, it's not. Uh, the way that we produce electricity in California is that we take water, which is heavy, and at nighttime, we pump it up the hill. And then in the daytime, when, it, when electricity is more expensive, we let it down the hill. So you see how that works? You cut one foot off of the end of the blanket and you <laughs> sew it to the other end and you make the blanket longer. We actually have listed as a power plant in California, a gravity fed water device that pumps water up at nighttime requiring energy to do and then releases it in the daytime when it's more expensive. You see, that's how it so, works. So, so what can go wrong? electricity is the same, but the state is making a little money on the arbitrage between the nighttime <laughs> price and the daytime price. That is price. precisely correct. They are they are making arbitrage money on not uh, on something that they list as a as a power plant, or at least a power storage device. But not only does it not store power, it it takes power to pump water uphill. Wait a minute, I've got an idea. You pump the water uphill, and then as the water comes downhill, it runs a generator that runs the pump that allows you to pump the water uphill again. And the next thing you know, it just goes faster and it's faster and faster, and machine. then you've got unlimited free energy. Hey, <laughs> California, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to Scott. Uh, Disney removes ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from its famous Magic Kingdom greeting fireworks show. 
It's part of a broader effort, a spokeswoman, uh, spokesperson, excuse me, uh, for Disney told CBS News. It's not about one or two things. Scott, it's about one or two things, isn't it? The things that uh, we're not supposed to talk about. Yeah, and I think that it would have been easier just to, rather than to recut that audio, just to do a little drop in that says, and none of the above. Like you yes. can just <laughs> tag that that in at the end. Um, I, actually, I was studying something the other day and uh, it had to do with federal law related to um, advertising for real estate. And it said, um, it, it had this sentence there and I was supposed to be able to identify that something was wrong with the sentence. However, I did not see anything wrong with the sentence. Uh, as it turns out, the problem with the sentence was that it said that amenities were within walking distance. Oh and no. So, yeah. Now you oh, can no. you can say located near amenities, but if you say amenities are within walking distance, of course, you are going to offend someone. Uh, largely those people who don't get about by walking. And so, you know, I, I, there is no end to this. And I frankly don't give a fly and rip how Disney introduces anything. But think about every stadium in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats for the, well, I'm sorry, we're not going to play that today. But uh, right. <laughs> and, and what do you mean by ladies and gentlemen? And That's right. By say, amenities. Like any, any of the sort of civic rituals, if you want to call them that, are being um, gutted because, and we didn't realize this for so long, they're offending people. In fact, the people uh, who are now offended by that didn't realize they were offended until of late. Um, it's not like 40 <laughs> years ago, people were saying, oh my goodness, every time they say, ladies and gentlemen, it's like a dagger to my heart. I feel like <laughs> I'm excluded, like Mickey hates me. Um, <laughs> that just, it just never occurred to people. And, and, and I'll tag this on at the end. It's unrelated. We're not doing a story about it this week, but uh, New York City, uh, their ranked choice voting thing has finally come uh, around the merry-go-round and decided that the guy who won the Democratic primary is a guy who's a retired police chief. And as a, in entrance polls or polling before the election, uh, CNN was stunned to learn that some 69% of New Yorkers said that they need more police in the subway system. Uh, 69% versus 26%, okay? And the, they didn't show the number for this, but they said among black New Yorkers, it was higher. More black yeah. New Yorkers wanted yeah. more police in the subway system than the general populace at large. So from that, I take heart that even though, you know, the Twitterati and all the people who are in this kind of blackmail system where they're constantly being pressured by pressure groups that could consist of one guy with what we used to call a fax machine, um, eventually you're gonna get to the point where the rubber meets the road and real people are going to say, yeah, forget about this stuff. Why even bother? Why would I go to a place like that? There are a lot more fun things you can do with your children than to take them to a place that wants to convince them that they're confused about what's in their underpants. This, this goes back to something I've been saying for a while now, Scott. The progressivism is a disease that mostly afflicts affluent white people. And that's all there is to say about that. Although uh, I gotta, I have to point this out. My friend Stephen Cruiser over at PJ Media is working on a column today pointing out the fact that the two choices New Yorkers have for mayor are a former police chief and a vigilante. That's, that is Bill de Blasio's A vigilante who did the job of, of, of the police that weren't there. Yeah, I have enormous respect for Curtis Lee. Oh, He's yeah. one of my heroes. Good guy. Oh, there's a Very Republican running. <laughs> yeah, Curtis Lewa, the Sliwa, guy who founded Guardian, Guardian Angels, Angels Gu back in the late seventies. Really, really good guy. Anyway, and uh, okay, let's go to Bill uh, hmm. Biden to nominate environmental lawyer as assistant Army Secretary. The Biden administration will nominate environmental attorney Rich Rachel Jacobson as the assistant secretary of the Army for installations, energy and environment. Uh, she will spearhead the service's response to plans for climate change, which always makes me think of an M1, t M1 tank versus rising tides. But that aside, Bill, my question is this. Isn't the very existence of jobs like the one that uh, Jacobson is being appointed to, isn't the very existence of those jobs the very swamp that Trump failed to drain during those four years. Yes. 
and I could um, provide some helpful insurance, uh, not insurance, helpful advice for the incoming assistant uh, secretary of the army, which is, I'm sure, something that has eluded her and undoubtedly eluded the person who uh, appointed her. And my 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 simple piece of advice would be, it's the job of the military to destroy the environment. That's what we pay them for. And anybody who might be hiding in the environment is the reason we're doing that. We're not targeting the environment specifically, and we're not targeting all of the environment, but little tiny pieces of the environment, we're here to destroy. And and that's your job. And, um, and I can't wait to hear the day when we're going to be putting um, mufflers on, 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 on the Abrams, you know, sound suppressors to reduce the noise pollution. Now, of course, that will reduce the, ref the effective range of the, of the rounds from the uh, M1 from, I don't know, was it 1,700 meters to down to about 40 feet? Might as well put bayonets on them. Uh, but nevertheless, this is what we've got. And, and all of this virtue signaling is there to, to do what virtue signaling does. And the, the, this is not the problem. The problem is not the assistant secretary. The problem is what the it, the problem is what the appointment of somebody like this does to the morale of the actual war fighters. That's the problem. And um, and after all these years of, of combat, we've got the world's only not not just the best. We've got the world's only battle hardened military, and warriors are being forced out. And that's all on purpose. And my um, my. Only hope in this and, and confidence in this is that even though they're leaving the military in record numbers, they're not losing their patriotism. They're leaving because of their patriotism and they're not losing their experience either. That body of experience and courage will be there when we need it. And if they continue to do things like this, we're going to be needing it sooner rather than later. Steve, Indeed. Can, uh, can I add? I'm oh, just yeah, trying, please. I'm trying to envision Army like boot camp training where they do their survival training. They send the soldiers out into the woods for a couple of days and they have to kind of live on their own. And and I can see some soldier out there uh, cutting down saplings to make a lean-to for shelter. And, you know, the drill sergeant stepping in from perhaps from a PA system attached to a drone where they're monitoring the soldiers and saying, whoa, 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 easy soldier. That's not sustainable. <laughs> That's not sustainable. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm just picturing our guys having to fill out EPA forms in triplicate before firing around. Uh, Scott, only 36 percent of Americans think Joe Biden is really running the country. According to the poll, and I forget which organization this was, it wasn't Rasmussen, but it was somebody I've, I've heard of and it was respectable. 57 percent said they believe others are directing policy agenda in the White House, while 36 percent said they believe Biden, the oldest president in U.S. history, is in charge. Uh, what is this? Forget the uh, the actual numbers or whether or not people are right in their beliefs. The fact that so many people do believe this, uh, what does that say about the political health of our country right now? I think it says more about the person asking the question, not you, but the person who asked the polling question about it, because uh, I think most Americans have known for years that the president of the United States doesn't control the government, that that is run by career bureaucrats who've been there forever. And so those people stay the same from generation to generation. They only reappoint the top people in those organizations. And anybody who's ever served in a cabinet post or as an army secretary, for example, has quickly learned that being able to turn that massive flotilla that's been headed in the same direction for a hundred years during your, you know, two-year tenure in the post is a ridiculous proposition. So in reality, the president of the United States has in some ways been a figurehead and can set an agenda and can hope that that bubbles down to the agencies, but getting any long-term change to happen at the grassroots level, the place where the rubber of uh, procedure and policy meets the road of our actual lives is a pipe dream. Uh, a know. deeper dive into that data, by the way, Steve, reveals that, that of the 57 percent of the people that said that they don't think the president is running the country, Joe Biden actually was one of those people. And, and when the ballot came back, you could find that it had been erased and then and then the other bubble in pencil and it had been initial JB, uh, JB, Jill PhD. Biden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doctor. Jill Biden. Dr. Jill Biden. Uh, Scott, you reminded me of a column I wrote a little while ago for PJ called Two Cheers for Corruption. You know, the old patronage, patronage system, when the president would come in and fire everybody and install all his buddies, that was corrupt. But that was a, a minor corruption. Now we have the big corruption of a permanent bureaucracy that doesn't have any accountability of the American voter. And that's 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 big I, corruption. I think President I'll, Grant I'll, had no idea what he was doing when he pushed this whole idea of a civil service that endures. 
Yeah, yeah. Turned out to be just awful. We'll finish up with me very quickly. Iceland ran the world's largest trial of a shorter work week. The results, the headline says, will not shock you. The study shows that the world's largest ever trial, and there were thousands of people involved in this, of a shorter working week in the public sector was, by all measures, an overwhelming success. Now, this was just in the public sector. I can speak for the private sector. My wife works for a major corporation that has eliminated uh, Fridays. Every weekend is a three-day weekend. You're still expected to put in your uh, your 10-hour day instead of your eight-hour day for your 40 hours. But the fact is the people working from home who aren't bothered with a bunch of stupid meetings are doing an eight-hour workday in five or six hours, and no productivity has been lost whatsoever. What I would like to see us get down to is a 20-minute work week where you gather around the water cooler, say Thursday at 10 a.m., say hi to your buddies, have a cup of coffee, and go home. We can do this, America. Yeah, maybe not, but yes, I can dream. Can. And that's your <laughs> right yes. angle lightning round for this week. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.